The views and opinions expressed in The Fact Is with Hollis Grant are those of Hollis Grant and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Droids Canada Network. Droids Canada Network does not take responsibility for any content or position produced by Hollis Grant and his show. Listener discretion is advised. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of The Fact Is. I am your host, Hollis Grant. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the giant elephant that's in the news cycle, none other than President Donald Trump. Now, it's the end of March, and currently Donald Trump is free. So, if those of you who are listening are yelling and screaming, at whatever device you're listening to this wonderful podcast on that you can find on the Droids Canada Network, droidscanada.com, or if you're sitting there and cheering because Donald Trump is yet to be arrested, or if you're just wondering what's all the fuss even about anyway. I'm going to take a look at an interesting take on this entire situation, and it's from Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair is very left-wing. They're going to lean towards all the Democrats, and they're not going to paint a favorable light on the topic. This particular article is dated from March 27th, and that's in 2023. The headline reads, Donald Trump has hijacked the news cycle with indictment. Watch. Since announcing his impending quote-unquote arrest, which hasn't happened yet, and they do put that in brackets, by the way, which hasn't happened yet. Precursor to, they want it obviously to happen and they want him to be arrested. The former president has resumed his role as the media's main character. He's even returning to Fox News and has Republicans rallying behind him. It's feeling eerily like 2016. Already you're foreshadowing into the particular article that this will not be a favorable article towards Donald Trump. It will not be unbiased. This will not be news. This will be commentary. For the past week or so, we have been hostage to another strange Trump news cycle, a flashback to the many we lived through in the half dozen years between his escalator ride at Trump Tower to his helicopter exit from the White House. For a while, it looked like Donald Trump was out of our lives and retreating to his own palm elbow. Now, all of a sudden, everything is 2016 again, and we're glued to CNN news alerts. Now, it's interesting that this particular writer, Molly Jong Fast, is referencing, oh, it's all over again. We're all going to be watching these, these news cycles. Oh, look out, look out. I'm going to be glued to CNN. Not glued to any other news outlet, but glued to CNN. So you're only going to get one side, an anti-Trump side. You're not going to broaden your horizons and look at other media companies. After initial reports of possible charges in the Stormy Daniels hush money case, the Trump arrest news cycle truly kicked into gear early on. On the morning of March 18th, with post on Truth Social, quote, The far and away leading Republican candidate and former president of the United States of America will be arrested on Tuesday of next week. Protest, take your nation back, end quote. Two hours later, a spokesman said the former president had not written his post with direct knowledge of the timing of any arrest, while adding, quote, President Trump is rightfully highlighting his innocence and the weaponization of our injustice system, end quote. Love him, hate him, whatever your opinion of Donald Trump is, the man can get his name into the news. And that's a good thing. If one thing the man can do is promote himself and promote himself effectively. People are talking about him. That's all that matters. doesn't matter what they're saying. People are talking about him. Enough so that Molly Zhang Fast has to write an article about it, and yet really hasn't mentioned anything. 
Her article is basically how she's watching Trump in the news. But it didn't matter that Trump's spokesman seemed to walk back Trump's truth as posts on his truth social platform are ironically called or that quote Tuesday, March 22nd, came and went with no indictment from the Manhattan DA's office. The grand jury is reportedly meeting again Monday. None of those things mattered as Trump yet again hijacked the news cycle, this time by announcing his impending arrest, as the New Yorker's Susan Glazer wrote of the chaotic moment, quote, the political class's collective capacity for analyzing and digesting events that have not yet occurred, which still might not occur, and those details are presumably crucial to understanding how they will play out was on full display. Here we get into the central dilemma of covering Trump by virtue of the fact he was president and is currently leading the 2024 Republican PAC. Much of what Trump says and does is arguably newsworthy, but Trump is at best a bad actor and at worst a complete sociopath known to flood the zone with, and I quote, shit. In the immortal words of Steve Bannon, so the idea that we have in the media should take his word for when he makes some wild claims, seems at best misguided. And it's funny that they use the term bad actor, bad actor referring to Donald Trump took money or was paid off by the Russians. So on one hand, you have Russians paying off Donald Trump and you have the Chinese paying off Joe Biden. But yet Russia and China have both signed a exclusive deal with each other. Russia will be supplying uh, Russian oil to China. Russia will consider trading in the yuan, which is the currency of the Chinese dollar, along with other nations such as India, uh, Latin America, the group that makes up Latin America, Brazil, and Iran, and Saudi Arabia will also consider using the yuan and not the American dollar. But yet, if you support Donald Trump, he's paid off by the Russians or support Joe Biden, then you're claiming he's paid off by the Chinese. Of course, all of this is nonsense when you're considering none of it really matters and politicians are selling your country out. And this happens in other countries as well, especially in Canada. Though it would be impossible to ignore a pending indictment of a former president, could the breathless nonstop indictment watch have been avoided? Theoretically, yes. But there is a muscle memory many of us have from covering Trump, a kind of Stockholm syndrome from the constant nonstop flood of news. And it's easy to fall back into old patterns. Exactly. And the reason why that you have Stockholm Syndrome there is because people were clicking on this news. You became so obsessed with reading anything to do with Trump and so outraged of anything to do with Trump that you essentially radicalized yourself to become anti-Trump. It didn't matter what he said. He could have done something good. He could have given a, a kid a hundred bucks. He could have signed an autograph, which actually he did, and that didn't actually get any, any press coverage, but it was a very touching moment. Stopped and signed a little girl, signed an autograph for her in a hotel room, a lobby. But none of it matters of what good that he did because you're – constantly clicking to find the negatives. What dirt did he do? How angry am I going to get myself? One of the reasons that why Twitter is so successful keeps on feeding you content that you want to engage in, which happens to be negative things that you want to keep on engaging in. The best thing to do is whenever you feel yourself getting angry at reading something is put your phone down, put your close your computer, and go outside and go for a walk. Trump as president was an assignment editor from hell, driving the news cycle over everything from preposterous ideas like buying Greenland to terrifying ones like bombing North Korea. 
by virtue of the fact that Trump was president, his tweets, his utterance, and his weird foibles led to countless headlines. Just as Trump was able to reclaim his role as assignment editor, another familiar story emerged, Republicans holding themselves hostage to Trump. The GOP, or the Grand Old Party, was presented with yet another opportunity to decouple itself from the albatross that it had significantly cost their party in three straight elections. But instead of using a possible indictment as a way to rid themselves of the former guy, Republicans have been literally falling all over each other to defend him, despite not being sure what, if any, charges will be filed. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy warned of politically motivated prosecutions, while Republican defenders hit airwaves. On CNN State of the Union, Kentucky Congressman and frequent Trump defender James Comer wasn't sure what he was defending Trump from on Sunday morning, but he seemed to seem sure Trump was innocent. Are you arguing that people who commit business crimes are not committing crimes? Asked CNN Jake's Tapper. Is this a business crime? We're talking about federal election crime. Comer responded. My understanding, Tapper said, is that he's being investigated for falsifying business records. The Republican rush to defend Trump was so deeply embarrassed, embarrassing, you'd think it might have led to a moment of grand old party introspection, but alas, the crew that is always so worried about the weaponization of federal government use its power in Congress to target Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, even as his office has yet to charge Trump with anything. Now, here's something that's a, a novel idea. You have a show like CNN that broadcasts for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they need guests. And what are you going to do? You're going to call out to any type of guest that will go on. And the most narcissistic people in the world happen to be politicians. So, of course, you're going to find people that are just going to jump on TV just to get in front of the nation and get their screen time so they can go back and say to their constituents, vote for me again, look at me, look how popular I am. I was on CNN. They like to interview me. Comer, another Fox News frequenter, frequent flyer, Jim Jordan, wrote to Bragg, you are reportedly about to engage in an unprecedented abuse of persecutal authority. With Trump fully in the media spotlight and Republicans rallying behind him, even critics acknowledged how the former president could benefit. This indictment is a billion-dollar gift in kind from Democrats to Trump's 24 campaign, former Representative Peter Miser tweeted. Trump reportedly raised $1.5 million in his indictment in just three days and has enjoyed a poll bump, while Ron DeSantis' recent performance of on the national stage has worried the GOP donors. Never one to let a possible scandal go unexploited, Trump has used the potential indictment as a centerpiece of his Waco, Texas rally on Saturday, telling the crowd, you will be vindicated and proud. The thugs and criminals who are corrupting our justice system will be defeated, discredited, and totally disgraced. At one point, Trump put his hand on his heart during the playing of the of a rendition of the national anthem as sung by the J6 choir a group of imprisoned rioters while behind him a large screen played footage from the and I'll use the quote unquote insurrection at the capitol the weekend rally also happened to coincide with the 30th anniversary of the government standoff in Waco with a doomsday sect the branch davidians and I'm going to keep on using the quote-unquote insurrections if you are familiar with the recent security footage that has come out. And they show the gentleman with the bison hat and the face paint, that they like to call the QAnon shaman, being escorted and walking around with police officers. Never once did they arrest the man. It was at one point with about at least five different police officers and no one else around him. They could have easily arrested him. There was no insurrection. 
Trump's stance of being anti anyone who doesn't support him was pretty clear to anyone watching. As I write this, Trump still hasn't been indicted, but he has used the threat of any possible consequences for his actions to once again become the main character of the news cycle. He's even slated to return Monday night to Fox News, a recent target of his ire due to its glowing DeSantis coverage. It seems very likely that Trump can parlay this main character status into another GOP presidential nomination like global warming. Trump is on the horizon again, and it feels like we are powerless to stop it. A simple solution for for a lot of these people, especially for the author, is to not write about it. It's just not newsworthy. If you decide just to not write about it and ignore the story, much like a lot of stories that go unreported, not cared about. But yet they know, and these particular journalists, quote-unquote journalists or opinion writers, know that these articles generate revenue. And you make money on outrage. And if you can whip people up and get them into a frenzy, you're going to make money. And you're going to be able to sell your article draw in ad revenue and write another article to get people upset to keep them coming back for more. People don't like to be happy or don't want to read news and want to be happy. People don't want to sit down and go, oh, it's yet another article telling me how great everything is. People want to be enraged. And Donald Trump is the perfect enraging weapon, polarizing person. You can hate the man, you can like the man, but you have to understand you have to keep the man and his policies completely separate. And it seems that a lot of these journalists or opinion journalists have a hard time separating the two. Love to know what you think. You feel free to reach out to us on Twitter, on our Facebook, through georgecanada.com. I'd like to thank you for tuning in this week to another edition of The Fact Is. I am your host, Hollis Grant, and from wherever you are listening in around the world, have yourself a great week. Hi, this is Hollis Grant, host of The Fact Is. You can find us Wednesdays on droidscanada.com, where we discuss current affairs from around the world.